Welcome to this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports. I'm, uh, boy, I'm all flustered this weekend's edition. I don't know what it is, but uh, I guess it's you. Get me, you fluster me, Greg. <laughs> you th you'd think the woman next to me would fluster me, but no, I'm flustered by you. It's because I'm so hot. <laughs> That's the biggest joke of the day. Yeah, no, but uh, did you miss your gig there last week? You know, we were up to Unity. You were... No, I, uh, I thought it was good. Renee, I thought did a good job, and... You know, I had fun at the lawnmower races. Charlie told me some very interesting stories, so. Yeah, now I want to know, the question you posed to Charlie had to do with, I feel the wind. What, you know, that's what somebody up there told me. You feel the wind like Earnhardt did in, at Talladega. He could well, feel the if wind. if you look at the picture that Dave put up on screen here, it ain't so much feeling the wind. It might be breaking wind, you know <laughs> what I mean? But uh, I'll tell you, we used to have a ball, and and. You know, if it wasn't for the broken ribs and the broken collarbones and things like that, I'd probably still be doing it. But yeah, it was pretty interesting up there. They they get it done. A few of them, you know. Yeah, and you saw her in the piece there. You know, one of them got flipped there. Ryan Lund. He looked like he wanted to get up and feed somebody the knuckles. Yeah, he did. He did want to feed the knuckles. <laughs> you could tell. So no, it's good. It's uh, you know, now where it on the street is next week or this upcoming week, I should say, this Friday night. Renee's going to go up there and try one, so I don't think she knows what she's in for. I don't think so either. I think they're just going to let her ride around like she's mowing yeah. the lawn. They don't want to I ride. almost thought about asking to drive the pace mower, but... Because you need the key... I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. The key to success with racing a lawnmower is being beefy. Yeah, keeping the weight on yeah, the, you the gotta traction keep, down. You've got to keep the left cheek over the left rear fender and the right cheek on the left rear fender, and you can make some ground up right yeah so no it was good and then obviously unity was a ball you know yeah it looked like i, I watched the show and saw the highlights from up there and it looked like you guys had a pretty good time you know the hula hoop george was all decked out he in was his magnum pi oh yeah he looked like there. tom the, what was the guy's name tom Selleck, no or? not not tom Selleck, but uh higgins the guy oh higgy <laughs> yeah higgy <laughs> but uh i thought i won the hula hoop contest i think it was rigged but you know what when you go to their playground they make the rules well I thought it was rigged. When I saw him put it on you, I knew that you were DQ'd. What do you mean? I saw they had ropes hanging so the hula hoop couldn't fall down. How was that fair? Listen, <laughs> the tech guy's wife made it. So, I mean, you'd think there would be a little clout there. You know? I already, because I'm a racer, I look at the gray areas on the rules and I already know how you could have beat that rule. How's that? Had a hula hoop that was tight around your belly. And then it couldn't have fallen down. You could have just wiggled your belly around. It looked like it was going, and it would have never fallen to the I would have looked like that cartoon character the, <laughs> with a little tutu there. I don't know what her name is. And but. you would have got the prize. But yeah, no, they would have found That's what happens out. when you cheat. Whatever. Yeah, no, that's... But it was it was a great time, you know, and because uh, race season's winding down, yep. you know, and it's just, it's just so much. Everybody's, uh, you know, everybody's on edge trying to get their last season, last of the season points. You know, there's still a lot going on. Finally, this week, we're able to, we're going to show some motocross later in the show. You know, I've been yeah. trying to get the motocross footage out there. And, you know, because Maine, we've shut some tracks down the last couple of years. But between Hemans and, and MX207, MX 207, where yeah. that piece is from, I mean, there's still a, a big following in the motocross field. Yeah, that, I mean, that's good. I mean, racing's racing. It doesn't matter what you do, whether it's motocross, lawnmowers, drag yep. cars. Yeah. Oval track. Yeah, no, racing's racing. Right. right. That's a new one, Greg. And that's what we cover. Yeah, we cover racing. All forms of motorsports. Car shows, cruise nights. Right. You name it, we got it. You know, and as you look at the board there, you see some of the things going on, some of the new... Uh, Signature sponsors. Sponsors, right, you know, right. and uh, we just we just struck up a deal with the Geary Motel chain, and they have uh, their four motels, the Best Western, uh, what used to be, you know, the Holiday Inn next to the Civic Center, the Comfort Inn down the road, the Parkwood Inn over in Brunswick, and then they have the Grand Hotel up in uh, Hot up in uh, Waterville. That they've struck a deal with us that anybody that's looking to stay at one of these places, providing it's not a blacked out weekend right. or day, or they're already full, they can call up, tell them they want the mainly motorsports rate, and it's seventy three bucks for a room, and that's year round. So that's that's a pretty good, good deal. deal. Yeah, you know, and I've already had some people take advantage of it. So you know. As we get closer to my race going on up at RKS and then the Augusta show, you know, which they always work with us for those anyway. Right, yeah. But it is good to know that if you want to take your wife out or your girlfriend and you say, hey, you know, I'm looking for a nice place, affordable, you know, go support uh, one of the motels that supports us, you know. Right, yeah. 
So it's just another opportunity and things we're doing for ourselves. Obviously, it's, you know, it's got to benefit us, but then we also want it to benefit our viewers, you know, and right. been hearing from a lot of viewers. Last week, we had a little glitch in the, the DVD, you know, I, you know, electronics are great, but <laughs> until they screw up. So we, we had a, we had a bad batch of DVDs. So we got that straightened out. Luckily, you were able to get back and follow it on Friday or Saturday. So it, it was a good show. It was a yep. lot of fun up there, you know. Yeah, and you can always look at it on the internet. Usually, we post it on Facebook. Yep, you know, it's form. on YouTube, so right. you know, it's pretty neat. It's uh, just trying to get the show out there and put us in front of people, as many people as we possibly right. can. So, the big question is, did you miss me? I mean, I know you had Renee. No, because I had my wife. It looked like you had a lot more room in here. Oh, yeah, we had a lot more room. <laughs> Jeez, and throw, I could have put a refrigerator in between of us, you know. It looked like the table was tipped that way. I don't know yeah. if no, it was there was, you were leaning yeah, on Yeah, we, we uh, you know, she's got to beef up or I got to trim down. But uh, up to Unity, you, you would have had fun with that, you know, and it was it was a good time and it yeah. was great. Uh, we had Daryl from LKQ to yeah, make the track up that, there yeah. to present the driver of the month. Um, great you know, guy. My wife and my secret weapon in the hula hoop contest, the Big E, but uh, even she got, I, I don't think she was favorably looked upon, you know? I mean, that's what happens when you bring a ringer in. They, they kind of, you know, I mean, she had all the assets. Did, uh, so who ended up winning that? Did, did you ever find out who won the hula hoop contest? I think the winner was the organizer's daughter, but I didn't say that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, no, it was, it, I mean, it's just for fun, you know what I mean? So it's good, and it was it was fun. All the kids being out on the front stretch was, yeah. that, that was awesome. It really it was. It looked like it was really good hardware, too. They all looked excited to be And able then to, to do the it. interviews on the track, you yeah. know, and it, that was that meant a lot because some guys just don't get into that winner's circle right you know so to be able to be heard and you know dylan turner to give his side of the story on you know uh what happened between him and you know the 18 car brian whitney you know it was you know obviously the people there they saw it but it was nice to hear that yeah geez he did do what i thought he did you know right yeah so but we got a great show planned today we got some some tractor footage from the make-a-wish poll this past weekend and uh just just so much going on so we're going to take a break and we'll be right back on mainly motorsports Five years ago, I went shopping for my family's first camper. I didn't like the prices, and I didn't like the way I was treated. A year later, I opened up Scott's Recreation. Today, Scott's Recreation is Maine's exclusive multi-line Heartland dealer, along with being Maine's number one fifth wheel dealer two years in a row. Browse through the new 2012 Heartland models or take advantage of closeout prices on 2011s. Scott's welcomes almost anything in trade, financing available too. Scott's Recreation, Route 202 in Manchester, and their new Turner location on Route 4. All of us at Moody's Collision Centers would like to thank you for supporting us for over 30 years. We all own stock in Moody's and have a vested interest in you and your vehicle. The people at Moody's Collision Centers are part of the community and our reputation is very important to us. We take pride in our work and guarantee our repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. At Moody's Collision Center, we care about our customers. So when your insurance company asks where you want to go, tell them Moody's, Moody's Collision, Collision Centers. Centers. Four convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, and now Portland. Are you Bob Crowley? Hey, yeah. Are you going to Osby Trail? Yes, I am. Sweet. Get in. People will do whatever they gotta do to get to Osby Trail Motor Sales, Route 25, Gorham. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Southern Maine Motors, out to be Maine's number one Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep dealership. Now this. Next segment coming up, just added to my busy weekend that weekend, you yeah. know, Richmond, Unity, and uh, Make-A-Wish. And I, I told Terry Sylvain, who you'll see in the next segment of the interview, that I'd come down myself, and I wish I hadn't been so tired. And it was kind of a rainy, dreary day, but still, they raised $7,800 for the Make-A-Wish organization. That's incredible. You know, people bidding on, they had everything from pigs to... Uh, I don't know rugs and I mean you name it they bid on it and you know and they and people bid it up even though it might not be worth the money it's right. getting but you know and then they feed you you'll see some photos and some footage there that you know everything going on that day so next year I'm really 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 gonna hopefully the weather cooperates really can can uh, try to convince our viewers and encourage them to come out to this because just to see the kids the looks on their faces any and then any event that the Make a Wish is involved in. Uh, I know that they do a big go kart race in the sum in the winter time that has a lot of named drivers. Yep. Any any event that the Make a Wish is involved in, 
you, people need to go out and support it and and donate a little time and effort yep. into it. I no. mean, because it's a great organization. I agree. So you're gonna uh, you're gonna see this this next two pieces there and, and see what that was all about and the hard work that went in, but the smiles made it all worth it. Learning not the greatest day of weather, but still tons of people out to support what you guys are doing here for Make a Wish. Yeah. Well, it's good. God has uh, cleared up the rain, and uh, at seven o'clock this morning, I was rather discouraged. My phone started ringing at quarter after. Are you on? And I said, Yeah, we're going to take a step of faith. We're on. Yeah. So we're going to do it. There's so many good hats out there that are going to continue and uh, push forward with it. And here we are, and have a look around. Look at the crowd. It's oh, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it is. And those kids, uh, you know, maybe not as many as you'd hope they'd show up, but still the ones that showed up, they just, the smiles on their faces and, you know, they get those trophies, just just huge for them. And that's what it's all about. That's right. One little boy, this was his fourth year here. And he uh, just told us over there uh, uh, on the way by that he looks forward to this all year long. This is the fourth year he's been here, and he just looks forward to it. And he pulled the tractor twice, and he's a happy guy. Yeah, no, and that's because it's a big deal for those kids. Let's face it, you know, they, you know, they, all the doctor's appointments and things that they're dealing with day in and day out. You know, if you could put a little ray of sunshine into their, into their Sunday, let's say, and you, right. you guys did it. You've done it for four years. You got a lot of great people behind it, also working with you. That's right. I'm, I'm so proud of my uh, tractor club and my family and everything. Everybody's worked so hard to bring this forth. And when you see the smiling faces here, it's worth it all. Oh, it that is. That smile is golden. Yeah, it is. And in, in any kid, you know, so it's great. And, you know, I appreciate it. And I know, uh, you know, the, all the parents of these kids and the whole Make-A-Wish organization appreciates what the Southern Maine Garden Tractor Club does for them each year, annually in August, at Charlie Cole's place. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it couldn't be done without my uh, son-in-law, Charlie Cole, my daughter, Heather, my wife, and the rest of the club. Well, you can see how hard everybody's pushed and worked for this. A lot of sweat went into it from everybody. Nobody takes uh, any of the credit as a single unit. It's everybody pulled together. And I want to personally thank everybody for everything you've done. Thank All right, you Ernie. Much. We'll go grab a burger and enjoy the rest of the Sounds day. Sounds good to me. Thank right. you, Steve. All right, thank you. See you next year. You will. <laughs> A good job there, buddy. Say thank you. Okay, we got one more, one more member puller, one more puller. Here he goes. Here he goes. Let's help him out, folks. Let's help him out here. Come on. Let's help him out. Here we go. Here we go. What's your name, young fella? Lucian? Yeah. That's a nice name. Okay, here's Lucian. Let's help Lucian out here. Come on, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, Lucian. You can do it. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, he got a full pull. There we go. Here we go. 
All right, folks, just help. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. Jonathan's doing a good job. Let's give him a hand, folks. Let's give him a hand. <coughs> Isaac's right, going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going for it. He's going for it. Stop ribbing out. Let's have some voices here. He's doing a good job. Good job. Let's have a hand here. Let's have a hand. Let's give him a hand here. Here he goes. He can do it. <coughs> they do better. They do better when they get a hand. Come on. Let's do it. Good job, James. Good job. A swing on the mole in front of the house here. They are taking tickets for the raffle. Please go over and see them. Everything goes to make a wish. He's putting everything into it. Let's have a hand, guys. Come on. Let's have a hand, folks. He's doing it. There he goes. Good job, Nick. Good job. I know you're gonna dig this. And this one is gonna be for Jonathan Shoemaker. Jonathan Shoemaker. There's Jonathan Shoemaker. Hey Jonathan. Look up. I want to thank all the sponsors for the trophies. <laughs> Okay, Jonathan Showmaker, I mean, you just came down that track and that track to tell me what that felt like. Great, and that time I'm going to bring Donny for wear a helmet. You're going to bring your own helmet? No, Donny for wear a helmet. Oh, now, you, uh, you got all the way to the end. Did you, did, you, uh, did you think you were going to be able to pull it all the way to the end? Yeah. What was I thinking? Now, what do you think about that trophy, huh? Did you expect that today? Did you know you were going to win when you showed up here? Yeah. Hey, John, talk about the experience here for the kids and everything that they're doing here for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Oh, this, is, this is a great thing for the kids. It's for everybody, and it does a, a great job of help raising funds for Make-A-Wish. And this is our second time. And uh, the boys, they, uh, they did a great job. They pulled it all. Now, when they leave here, do they bug you about maybe getting your own tractor for the backyard? Or? I've got my own tractor. It's not a pulling tractor, but they want to drive it all the time. There you go. So uh, great time. It's good that you come out and, and, you know, support the cause and with these guys and, you know, show your support by bringing the boys and gives them an opportunity to have a nice, fun day, even though the weather's holding off, you know. It did better than I expected. Yeah. So thank you, and thank you for coming down. Thank you. All right. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself, just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Clark's Car Crushing has been a family-owned and operated business since 1978. We do everything from crushing cars, handling industrial scraps, to buying the scrap metal right out of the back of your pickup. Copper, brass, stainless steel, aluminum, you name it, we'll buy it. We have roll-off containers of all sizes for industrial accounts. We'll handle the legwork with full drop-off and pickup services. So for a professional job, guaranteed honest weights, and top dollar paid statewide, come see the Clark family in Farmingdale, Maine. Clark's Car Crushing. Don't fix it, scrap it. All of us at Moody's Collision Centers would like to thank you for supporting us for over 30 years. We all own stock in Moody's and have a vested interest in you and your vehicle. The people at Moody's Collision Centers are part of the community and our reputation is very important to us. We take pride in our work and guarantee our repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. At Moody's Collision Center, we care about our customers. So when your insurance company asks where you want to go, tell them Moody's, Moody's Collision, Collision Centers. Center. 
four convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, and now Portland. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Scott's Recreation. Now at three convenient locations, go to scottsrecreation.com to view our inventory. Award Champs, the official award supplier of Mainly Motorsports. Hey Terry, you're the treasurer of the club. Last year was your first time coming to this Make-A-Wish tractor pull, and then you guys jumped in full floor. You're heavily involved with the club now, and, and you did a lot with raising money to get the trophies for these kids, huh? Yes. We went out and got sponsors. Uh, everybody sponsored a trophy for one of the children. Um, then we ordered the trophies and gave them to the Make-A-Wish kids. And we just saw every one of them had a big smile. I mean. You know, some of them have been here before, so they know they're getting a trophy. But how about those first-time kids? They don't know what to expect. They show up, they get to pull a tractor, and they take a big trophy home, you know? It's amazing to see these kids' faces, too, the expression on their faces. They don't get out much. Um, it just amazes me at what I can give back to the Make-A-Wish. Yeah, because just... we all take every day for granted, you know, and these kids with the doctor's appointments and things, their parents, and it's almost like their parents come and you, you know, put, you're putting a smile on their parents' faces too because they're seeing their kids smile. Yes, and today it's not a good turnout like it was last year because of the rain, but to see these kids, the you know, their faces is just amazing to me. It's a great day, great, Make-A-Wish is a great thing, and I got involved quite a bit this year. I got to learn some of the kids that are still here with us, some of the kids that aren't here with us. Yeah. There's a couple of them that have since passed away since last year. Yeah. Uh, they granted two wishes this last year, and this year they're hoping to make three wishes. Yeah, so that's good. And, you know, hopefully, I'm sure you're still going to raise a boatload of money, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, and then next year, the fifth annual, it just keeps growing every year. I hope so. I'm, I'm in it for the, you know, the years that it's here to come. No, and it's good because I just talked to Ernie, and and that's what he said. He mentioned all the people behind the scenes because this is a group effort. One person can't pull something like this together. This whole club is doing a great thing uh, with this Make-A-Wish. It's a year of planning. They start making meetings for the following year. Every single month they hold the meeting and this is what we plan is for the Make-A-Wish. No, that's good. And I thank you personally for getting involved because it's... It's all, what do they say? It's all about the kids, right? It's all about the kids. It's all for the kids. And we thank you very much for coming, too. All right, Terry, go get your hamburger. <laughs> and there you see, you know, you saw, you know, some of the event organizers, quick to give credit to others. And you saw, you know, some of the kids who heard from Jonathan, you know, uh, his take on the whole experience. Right, so that's yeah. just... Like I said, I can't even say enough to to make it you realize how and it, and it makes you feel to be there. And it's typical of event organizers for something like that. 
of them to pass down the torch a little bit, and not yeah. to take the torch which they've earned. Yeah, because no. that's the kind of people that they are. You know, normal people don't go out and make an effort to put something like this on and put and it together. And that was the fourth annual. So, like I right. said, I can't even put into words what you feel like when you're there and see these people and see the parents and you know it's all about smiles that day so you know i hope you all enjoyed you know the make a wish segment and think about it next year when it rolls around right out here on the boom road at charlie coles and you know the first of august so we're going to take a break we come back we got some motocross coverage from mx207 five years ago i went shopping for my family's first camper i didn't like the prices and i didn't like the way i was treated a year later, I opened up Scotch Recreation. Today, Scotts Recreation is Maine's exclusive multi-line Heartland dealer, along with being Maine's number one fifth wheel dealer two years in a row. Browse through the new 2012 Heartland models or take advantage of closeout prices on 2011s. Scotts welcomes almost anything in trade, financing available too. Scotts Recreation, Route 202 in Manchester, and our sister company, Holton Power Sports, North Street, Holton. Have a ticket but need a ride? Let VIP take you to the hottest events, including Entertainer of the Year, Taylor Swift at Gillette Stadium, June 25th and 26th. Or Country Music Superstar and Grammy Award winner, Kenny Chesney, August 27th. And September 25th, don't miss the NASCAR Sylvania Sprint Cup at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Leave the driving to VIP and let VIP take you to the hottest events. Call or reserve online at VIPchartercoaches.com. At Southern Maine Motors, we're celebrating Jeep's 70th anniversary with our spring events. Get the vehicle you want at a price no one else can touch. Like a 2011 Jeep Compass, leased for only $239 a month for 39 months. Or a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee, leased for only $299 a month. Plus, right now, used car values are at an all-time high. Bring in your own vehicle and drive off in a brand new car. With savings this big, it's no wonder Southern Maine Motors is out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealer. Visit SouthernMainMotors.com. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you this week by LKQ. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Route 202, Gorham. If you want a copy of a show, send a check or money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports, 326 Roosevelt Trail, Windham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show. Hey, I'm Kyle Busch, and when I'm in Maine, I watch Mainly Motorsports. And now it's funny, we always think of motocross being separate than stock cars, you know what I mean? Two wheels versus four wheels. Right, and there's a lot of guys that have dirt bikes, four wheelers, other things like that that go out and hit the trails. You know, it's another fun thing. And a, a lot of these car racers, I mean, you got to be on, you got to get a dirt bike before you can get a, and when I was a kid, there was nothing like a four wheel. It was all two wheel right. dirt bikes, you know? I used to race over at the old pony track, they called it, in Buxton or Bar Mills with David Pinkham and Phil Pinkham on our little XR75s, <laughs> you know? And obviously their career went one way behind the wheel and my career went another way. So I guess I should have figured it out then when I was getting my butt handed to me right, that yeah. I didn't have it. But you know, now, you know, these kids of today are gonna make names for themselves on the motocross track and then right. and they'll be behind the wheel. Like you said, the, there's local races that have their kids involved you know, I know Steve Barry, multi-time champ at Beechridge. His son's been racing motocross. And I've talked to people that say, this kid gets it done. And uh, and they said, Steve was always crazy behind the wheel or on anything anyway. He was so, crazy on a dirt bike. Yeah, so this kid's, anything. you know, the kid's not falling far from the tree. <laughs> and then, you know, everybody that comes to the Northeast Motorsports Expo obviously sees the EJP display and maybe, right. maybe has noticed the last couple of years, a couple of little dirt bikes in there. Well, that's... Peter's grandsons and Stephen's boys, they're doing the, the motocross thing, you know? So just... Right. Uh, TV's brought it back. I mean, a lot of, of us did that type of stuff growing up, but TV has brought it back more into the mainstream. I mean, you turn on Speed Channel or something like that, and there's motocross racing yeah. every weekend. You know, and then Ricky Carmichael, I mean... The GOAT. The GOAT, and then, you know, Stewart and all those guys. I mean, now it's... It, yeah, even if I'm... Not, you've got to watch it. When these guys are flying through the air, you have to watch it. Right. So, you know, we're getting some motocross back on here, and I appreciate... They call him Suzuki Sean for, uh, for getting this piece to us together. And uh, we're going to continue to show some motocross throughout the year. So uh, enjoy this motocross piece from MX207. I think it was the New England Championships.
Car Crushing has been a family-owned and operated business since 1978. We do everything from crushing cars, handling industrial scraps, to buying the scrap metal right out of the back of your pickup. Copper, brass, stainless steel, aluminum, you name it, we'll buy it. We have roll-off containers of all sizes for industrial accounts. We'll handle the legwork with full drop-off and pickup services. So for a professional job, guaranteed honest weights, and top dollar paid statewide, come see the Clark family in Farmingdale, Maine. Clark's Car Crushing. Don't fix it, scrap it. Have a ticket but need a ride? Let VIP take you to the hottest events, including Entertainer of the Year, Taylor Swift, at Gillette Stadium, June 25th and 26th. Or country music superstar and Grammy Award winner, Kenny Chesney, August 27th. And September 25th, don't miss the NASCAR Sylvania Sprint Cup at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Leave the driving to VIP and let VIP take you to the hottest events. Call or reserve online at VIPchartercoaches.com. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Scott's Recreation. Now at three convenient locations, go to scottsrecreation.com to view our inventory. Now you've heard me talk, and obviously I always talk because that's what my kid's in, about RKS. And my big event, the Mainly Motorsports TV 400, which is coming up September 10th and 11th. So this over a weekend ago, we, we went up there and we caught up with some of the kids that were there competing this year that won that event last year. Try to hear what they say about winning the big hardware and what it meant to them. And then we also took the time to talk to some kids that were so close last year, but this year they're hoping to take the big trophy. Right. And then there's a young man that's just coming to Maine from New Hampshire. They didn't race for anything like this where he raced at last year. Now he's racing for a big event, big deal hear what he heard from the kids that competed in it last year you know and you were there i mean you right. saw what it was all, and that was really your first trip right well i'd been to rks a couple times but that was my first hands-on experience right yeah and uh it, it's it's a big deal yeah you know and i'm There's not just saying that to try to because place. we're doing it i mean to see these kids walking around racing for the big trophies racing and we uh, i interviewed ben Rowe, and you'll see in the next segment ben talks about what it means to him as a parent you know, he, this is a guy that's been in the big game. He's won right. the Oxford 250. He's won races in Florida, won races in Canada, you know. North and that, Carolina. Yeah, you know, he's, to hear him talk about what it's like to get his stuff prepared for his kid. So enjoy these next two segments from the Go-Karters and hear what they have to say about the big deal. At RKS. Yep. All right, DJ, you came up last year, picked up the win in the Mainly Motorsports TV 400 from the Oxford Division, but you didn't do what you wanted to do in the money races, did you? No, it, uh, it was a strategy race, and we ended up about two laps short on fuel in the lead, so uh, we ended up sixth or seventh, and hopefully can come back this year and have a little better fuel mileage. Yeah, now, you've been up here the last few weeks at Richmond County Speedway, and we all know why you're here, but why don't you tell the viewers why you're here? I mean, you love to race cars, don't get me wrong, but what's your main focus to be here? Just get ready for the race. Don't want to uh, let it sneak up on us like last year. We didn't really uh, take it serious enough to go for the win. We showed up, you know, the weekend before and just did a little bit of practice. But this year, I want to do the, do the racing and get the cards styled in a little better and go for the win. Now, 12.50 to win the Animal Unrestricted. 12.50 to win the Senior Sportsman. Win them both. It's a $500 bonus. That'd be a $3,000 payday. How many times has DJ Shaw won $3,000 at a race in a day? Oh, probably only twice. Only twice. So that'd be pretty good in a cot deal, huh? Yeah. All right, DJ. Well, thank you and good luck. Then uh, see if you can take home even a bigger trophy this year than you got last year. Thank you. All right. Okay, now we're talking about one of the winners from the junior box stock division last year, Christian Hanscom, was moved up to box stock, had a great run this weekend. But let's talk about that race last week, last year when you finished off in first place and took home the almost six-foot-tall trophy. I mean, how big of a deal that day was that for you? Well, I don't... I don't really think that's a really bad de deal. And not a bad deal? Was it a good deal? Well, it was a good deal, but... It really didn't mean anything to you? Why is that? Oh, so winning a six-foot... Well, well, it did mean something. So winning a six-foot-tall trophy is just like any other day up here? Really? Pretty much. Oh, my goodness. Well, I can't interview you. <laughs> no. Um, so talk about the day and how, how that day was. I mean, was it a big day all around to have all the cots yeah. and all that? So you're all ready for it this year? Yep. What do you think your chances are this year? Well, 
we probably might get first, but maybe not. Cause I can't get in the, um, my ties. Well, Levi, we, we started losing him for a little while, but then we caught up, then we lost him. He, he started pulling away slowly. Yeah. So, well, in three weeks you got that race, so maybe you can win another six foot tall trophy. Yeah, probably. All right, well, good luck, man. Hey. All right, thanks. Now we've caught up with a new competitor at Richmond County Speedway, and that's Ivan Kafel, who runs a junior sportsman class, having a great year for the first year being at the track and being in that class. Two wins, uh, lots of trophies, numerous runner up finishes, having great battles with Gunner Rowe. But you know, when you came to Richmond County Speedway, the one race that you circled on your calendar was a mainly motorsports TV 400. Is that right, Ivan? Yes, that is. Now, what have, what have the other kids told you about that race? That it's one of the biggest races at Richmond, and it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun, a lot of people. What have you heard about the trophies? They're about seven feet tall or something. Six feet tall. So, do you got enough room if you were able to win one of those trophies that day to get it home? I think so. You think you get it home? Now, obviously, you're only new to karting. This is your second year. Your first year at Richmond. You got a lot of people behind you that are helping you out to make this possible, and uh, why don't you talk about them and what what they talk about with that mainly motorsports TV 400? Yeah, a lot of people say that there's like there's like much more than just a regular day, and so I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope there's going to be a lot of people in my class because I like it when there's a lot of people because you have more racing. Yeah, no, that's good. But you're having a great year. We look forward to seeing you that day. And good luck from here on out. And maybe that day you'll bring home the big hardware back to Raymond, Maine. Right, Ivan? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you. So you won the race, right? Take me through the day. They were battling up front, three of them, right? And then they kept having skirmishes, and you were sitting there in fourth. With five to go, did you think you had a chance of winning that big trophy? No. No? And then now, you know, they all got together. That made you the leader. They had a three-lap restart, you pulled away, and when the checkered flag flew and you got to come around and get out and, and, and take that trophy and look at it and have your picture taken with it, what, what, what did you feel like, Jacob? Really happy and all that stuff. So when you, after you won the checkered flag, after you took the checkered flag and you came around and you stopped on the front stretch, who was the most excited person out there other than you on the front stretch? My grandfather. Yeah, he's a corner worker in turn one and two, and he was pretty excited, you know? So that was a big trophy, so what a great year to... Great way to end 2010. Now, do you think you can pull it off again this year and take another big trophy home with you? Yes. All right, Jacob. Well, good luck next uh, in a few weeks at the Mainly Motorsports TV 400. All right? Yep. Thinking about a new camper? What if you could get a new camper now and not pay for it till next year? Now you can at Scotch Recreation. Buy a new travel trailer. We'll make your payments until January 2012. Buy any new fifth wheel, we'll make your payments until March 2012. Over 100 units in stock and online at scottsrecreation.com. Camp now, pay later. Scott's Recreation, Route 4 Turner and Route 202 Manchester, Maine. Teacher, car salesman, take advantage of me. You didn't go to Ospi Trail? No, I went to the other guys. Mm, other guys. <clears throat> Don't bother going to the other guys. Go to Ossipee Trail Motor Sales, Route 25, Gorham. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Pat Man himself, just letting you know that Pat Man's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Southern Maine Motors, out to be Maine's number one Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep dealership. Okay, we're here with the driver of the number five, and that's Braxton Rowe. And Braxton, the first thing I want to ask you is, how come the number five? Because I went on the computer and I saw a number five race car and I like that. I called my dad and see if he could make it kind of like that. Now, do you realize your grandfather made that number pretty famous years ago up at Oxford? And you're making a name for yourself 
down here at Richmond County Speedway. I mean, you had a great night tonight. You won two races, but we all know what you're really after, right? It's that big race at the end of the year with yeah. the six-foot trophy, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how'd you do in that race last year? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good? I think you finished second, right? Yeah, I finished second. Now, was that trophy bigger than you? Yeah. So what do you think, a first place trophy, how big do you think that's going to be? Uh, probably like the same size as my mom, probably like the same size. No, bigger than your mom. Uh-huh, bigger than my mom. Bigger than your dad. Mm -hmm. And bigger than your grandfather. Mm -hmm. So, if you were to win that race, how are you going to get it home? Uh, I don't know. Alright, so what do you, why should people come that day? What makes that day so much more fun than just a regular race? I really don't know. Is it the trophies? I mean, all the awards, all the people? Mm hmm What are you after the most? Uh, the trophies. The trophies? Mm hmm All right, so September 10th and 11th, people need to come to Richmond County Speedway and watch Braxton Rowe continue on that Rowe legacy and try to make a name for himself right here at Richmond County Speedway, right? Yes. All right, Braxton, good job. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, okay Ben. When your schedule comes out every year, there's always a few races on there that you circle that are a big deal that you want to win. You won races from Florida to Halifax. Now we got a cart race in the state of Maine that all these kids want to win. I mean, you, last year that was your first time carting with your son for the second. Tell the viewers what that day was like. Well, I mean, it was fun. It was like, as you say, as you told me before I even got into racing that when you see your kid win the the taller trophy than they are, it's, it was huge. Uh, and you were right, you know, Braxton was second last year in it and uh, had a great time, and you're right, he actually circled this one on his calendar, and now I got him in two divisions, so he wants to go for that, uh, that big hat with. Now the first place trophy is six feet tall. And I asked him, he asked, he, he, thought, he thought it was as tall as his mother. I said, no, nope, it's taller than her, taller than your father. How's he gonna get him home? If he was able to pull it off, how's he gonna get him home? Well, if he can win this, you know, that's what we're shooting for is, is everybody's out here to win? Um, I'll get them all one way or the other. If we gotta, if we gotta throw them in Grandpa's back of his truck. But uh, no, I mean that's what it's all about. Everybody up here at RKS is all about the kids. Um, for what you do, what they do. Um, it's fun for me. It's fun for me to come up, and bring my six-year-old boy. We have a great time. Friday night, Sundays. Um, everybody comes up. Whole family atmosphere up here, and it's a great time. We even get in the dunk tank. Oh yeah, we got in the dunk tank. <laughs> but so what you're telling me is everybody that's not, that is a race fan should be make sure they're here on September 11th to watch these kids race for six foot tall trophies, $1,250 in the money classes. Absolutely. I mean, and we're talking six year old kids running for trophies. You're talking 12, 14, 16, 20 year old kids racing for 1200 or whatever to win. Yeah. Um, huge money for them guys. And then there's, if you can win both of them, and I stood next to the guy last year and his son didn't win both and he, he jumped three feet in the air. Oh yeah, then we get that bonus. No, so. it's pretty neat. This place will be packed. Um, I can't, we can't wait for it. It'll be a good show. All right, folks, well, that's Ben Rowe, and he circled this along with Braxton this date on his calendar because he wants to see his son win a bigger trophy than Ben's ever won. <laughs> Absolutely. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I've never won one six feet tall. So. All right. Thanks, Ben. Not a problem. Okay, you two guys have put on some of the best races throughout the season up here at RKS. That's Isaac Collins and Carter Patterson. You're battling it out. You're going to battle right to the end of the championship, but we all know whoever wins the Maine Motorsports 400 in the Sportsman Division, that's like bragging rights, am I right? Yep. Now Isaac, last year was a great race. The two of you battled the whole race with Alicia Perry. She's since moved on to the Senior Sportsman Division and it wasn't settled to the end and the three of you were under a blanket. So, I mean, you finished runner up to her. Kata was on your bumper. I mean, talk about that day. Well, um, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was really fun racing with Alicia and I mean, she was a really great racer, and I just, I can't believe that she won the championship, and I think that was really nice, but I would have had her if, <laughs> it was a caution at the end of that race, and that's when, that's what killed me, it was that restart, because the restarts don't really work that well. So, this year, you got to redeem yourself, and hopefully you don't run into that situation, and you get to take home the six-foot trophy. Yeah, I'd love that. Now, Kata, you came to RKS last year for the first time. So that was your first introduction to a big race, and that was really the best you ran all year, am I correct? Yeah. Well, talk about that day for you. I mean, running in the top three, you know, had a sniff of the lead, and the three of you put on a great battle. So why don't you take us back and, and talk about that day for you? Well, as it, uh, he was a great racer. Um, he, uh, my 
Hunter was living, so he was flying, and Alicia was flying, and I could barely keep up with him, but we kept, we kept that restart at the end put us all three under a blanket for the last whatever laps. Yeah, so obviously you two have battled week in, week out, and that race is probably going to come down to two of you. No, Isaac, I'm going to ask you first. If you don't win it and Carter doesn't win it, who do you think has the next best shot to sneak in and kind of steal the thunder that day? Well, if, if he wins it, that, I, I would say probably me if I had the most. No, not you or him. Who do you think? Who else has a shot? Maybe Zach Dresser. He's actually getting up a wall, I think. Yeah? He's having some problems there and then, but then sometimes he's one race he's there. Okay, Carter, if you don't win it, and Isaac don't win it, who do you think has the best shot to steal in the thunder and take it home the, the big six foot tall trophy? I have to go with Zach too because he's been fast for the last three or four weeks. Alright, well anybody that's been at RKS knows these two cats have put on a battle and I'm sure that day they're going to battle right down to the end to see who takes home the first place trophy in the second annual Mainly Motorsports TV 400. Kaylee Shapiro, you just finished off running uh, second to DJ Shaw. Ran out of fuel on the last lap, so you dropped the fourth. But uh, you moved up to the senior sportsman class this year. But the highlight of your year last year, obviously winning the championship in the sportsman division and rookie of the year. But how about that win in the Mainly Motorsports TV 400? That was a pretty big deal, getting that tall trophy. Yeah, I mean, just a race. you had a great battle with Isaac and Carter Patterson, you know, and then the you know, to end up and then get out of the cot and there's that big trophy waiting for you and a checkered flag and all that. So just talk about the experience of the whole weekend, you know, what it means to you to see all those people here. Um, felt good to see all the people here. Just they are watching or racing. And it was a pretty big deal when I got out and the trophy was like <laughs> that tall. Tall. <laughs> and what is it what do you think it means to the little kids getting those big trophies, you know? It's yeah, it must mean a lot to them, seeing them carry that to trophy that's like three times the size of them. Yeah, so do you think when DJ Shaw, this year now you're racing for $1,250. Last year we ran you in one race, the end of the year was a $1,250 win race, you finished fifth against 25 cots. What do you think your chances are going to be when DJ Shaw and Nick Haddon, Joey Dwyer and Evan Boya, Reed Lamper, all these guys show up? I mean, can you run with those guys? Can you beat them? Maybe I might have a chance against them, which is, yeah, maybe. All right, so tell everybody why they should come the weekend of September 10th and week, uh, September 10th and 11th. Um, they should come because it's just great racing and just a lot of fun. So that was an interesting piece to actually hear those full-time race guys, you know, when Big Car is talking about their kid, well, Ben talking about his son and, and DJ talking about himself preparing for it could be a three this, that could this, be a three thousand dollar payday right. for for DJ Shaw. You know that's right. that's pretty good payday for any reason. And that would have to be a big shelf to for Ben to put up in his son's bedroom. Yeah, and I remember on. last year Johnny Clark's nephews. That was their first race ever in a go kart. Right. They ran in the entry level class, and I have two entry level classes, an A and a B division, and I don't split them up by speed. I time trial, take the odds and the evens, and. Uh, Johnny's nephew finished second. Wasn't a second place cat. A couple of the faster ones took each other out, got racked or whatever. Right. Took home a four and a half foot tall trophy, bigger than anything Johnny's ever won. You know what I mean? <laughs> His for nephew's first race. So you heard Ben talk about six footer. You know, these kids don't even know how big six feet is. You right. know, I think it's seven feet tall, or I think right. it's big as my mom. You know, they're looking at you, you know. So it's it's a great time, and I encourage, you know, anybody that, you know, is looking for something to do that weekend. Sadly, you got Bangor and Unity wrapping things up. We're just qualifying. We get the mini cups here, but Sunday's the big day. You know the feature right. events and paying the big money. And there's uh, we like Chuck Hall. We pay on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> cash at the gate. Well, I don't know about cash at the gate, but we're paying that day. You leave with it. You know. Right. And uh, it's definitely a place if you want to go and see two major factors in racing: rising stars and veterans of short track racing because they're there yeah they're there checking it out watching and the neat thing was that you know the friday night that we did these interviews 
Um, my kid and DJ battled most of the race, and DJ won, and we ran out of fuel. I ran out of fuel again on the white flag, coming to the white flag. So we coasted to fourth, only lost two spots. They were that far enough ahead. If the thing ran on French fries, you probably wouldn't run out. Oh no, no, <laughs> Happy Meals. <laughs> but uh, but to see, you know that that's and that's what you'll see all weekend at that you know September 10th and 11th. So. Yeah, it's good battling all the way around. Yeah, so we're going to take a break. When we come back, me and Greg are going to wrap up this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports. At Southern Maine Motors, we're celebrating Jeep's 70th anniversary with our spring event. Get the vehicle you want at a price no one else can touch. Like a 2011 Jeep Compass, leased for only $239 a month for 39 months. Or a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee, leased for only $299 a month. Plus, right now, used car values are at an all-time high. Bring in your own vehicle and drive off in a brand new car. With savings this big, it's no wonder Southern Maine Motors is out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealer. Visit SouthernMainMotors.com. All of us at Moody's Collision Centers would like to thank you for supporting us for over 30 years. We all own stock in Moody's and have a vested interest in you and your vehicle. The people at Moody's Collision Centers are part of the community and our reputation is very important to us. We take pride in our work and guarantee our repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. At Moody's Collision Center, we care about our customers. So when your insurance company asks where you want to go, tell them Moody's, Moody's Collision, Collision Centers. Centers. Four convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, and now Portland. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you this week by LKQ. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Route 202, Gorham. Well, one of those shows where we just got, we got a lot of jam-packed stuff in here. You know, we got kids, we got Make-A-Wish kids, we got motocross, we got everything. Yeah, sometimes we need to fill it in with some stuff, you know. We need to spread ourselves, spread ourselves thin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> better go and uh, get a dozer to do that. But, you know, on next week's episode, you know, I think we had to do is we do a little research this week and uh, look at some of the point standings that's going on throughout the state and some of the tight battles at some of these tracks. Because, yep. you know, obviously there's probably some divisions that there's a walk away and we already know who the champion is. But let's total them up after this weekend and... Uh, and, and sit down and, and see where we got some nice battles that people can start following along with. Right, yep. That'll be interesting. Yeah. To no. see where, the, where you might want to go to see the... Yeah, see that new champion crown for the first or, time, you know, or... Guys trying to come from second to win their first championship. Yeah, or, no, and it's, it's a great time of year, you know, because, you know, it's been a big effort for the team and everybody to... Uh, to get to this point. And that's all you ask is to put yourself in position to challenge for that championship. Right, yeah. I mean, look at you guys last year. How many years did you try and how many times did you come close? And finally you put it together, you know? Yeah, it was uh, pretty eventful right down to the wire for us. Yeah, I mean, the last corner of the last lap. And, you know, right. we've I've seen them one like that. I've seen them lost like that. So right. it, it's, uh, it's a good time of year, you know? And then kids are going to be going back to school, so the parents are going to get their break. And, Yay! Yay, you know, so... <laughs> But uh, one quick thing I want to talk about is the Spud 150 coming up Labor Day weekend. So you late model guys looking for that one last big hurrah, go up to, you know, and now they got online. If you register early, you can save, I think, $5 a tire or something. So oh, Troy's, Troy's trying to do a little extra. So for Greg, I'm Steve. And for Steve, I'm Greg, right? Or whatever we are. Right. We, I'm not Renee. You're not Renee. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Mainly Motorsports, and we'll see you next time. To order copies of a show, send a check or money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports, 326 Roosevelt Trail, Wyndham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show. TWC TV, only on Time Warner Cable.